Hi, my name is Nathan Davidson, and I'm the pastor of Trinity Baptist Church here in Iuka, Mississippi. And we would like to welcome you and thank you so much for tuning in to our broadcast. Uh, our church is located at 11 Snowdown Road uh, here in Iuka. And our services, uh, and we'd like to also invite you to come and be with us sometime. Our services start at uh, 9.30 for Sunday school and 10.30 for our worship hour. And then Sunday night, we meet back again at 6 o'clock. And then our midweek prayer service is uh, Wednesday night at 7. And we sure would love to have you come by and visit with us. If you're looking for a, a church home or if you're looking to just visit or you have an opportunity uh, where your church is not meeting, we would sure love to have you come and be with us uh, for some of our services. Uh, just for an announcement, we have an upcoming homecoming on September the 21st. Uh, it will begin uh, regular times uh, for our church services on Sunday. But uh, we will be having a fellowship meal beginning at 12. And then at 1 o'clock, we'll have special singing by the group Saving Grace. And then on the 22nd, we'll begin revival, uh, be uh, Monday through Wednesday at 7 o'clock with Brother Matthew Haney. So we sure would love to have you come, and we hope you enjoy the broadcast. All right, if you have your Bible with you this morning, I invite you to turn with me to Matthew chapter number 20. Matthew chapter number 20. And we're going to start out with verse number 29. Matthew chapter 20 and verse number 29. Now, several, I don't know whether to say several years ago or many years ago. I don't know that I'm that old just yet. But I'm going to say several years ago. I guess it sounds better. Um, I preached a series of sermons on moments with a master or times that Jesus stood still and and there were times that you look at when during Jesus' earthly ministry when uh, he stopped for the woman at the well. He would stop and he would spend some time and he would spend a moment with a woman that had the issue of blood. He would spend some time with somebody that was blind or he would spend some time with somebody that was diseased. He would spend some time with somebody that had actually died and he would spend a moment with them. And I don't know, I've probably shared some of these thoughts with you. I think I might have preached on the, the uh, lady that had the issue of the blood, the woman uh, that uh, was there, the, um, the woman at the well. I've shared some of those thoughts with you, but I want you to think about with me this morning uh, when Jesus spent some time with two blind beggars. And I want you to think about that this morning as that relates to us in our own life. You see, when Jesus passes by, that is a vitally important time in your life and in mine because we have never been promised a future here on this earth. We haven't been promised a tomorrow. We haven't been promised an afternoon. We haven't been promised a night. We haven't even been promised another sunrise. We know that our time here on this earth is going to be short. We know that the time spent here is the time that we have to draw closer unto the Lord, to become Christ-like, to renew our relationship with Him, to draw closer and to reach out to those that are lost and to those that are headed to hell, to those that are in need, to the widows and the orphans and to those that are suffering. So the time that we have here is of vital importance. And at any moment in time when you feel the Lord passing by, when you feel that Spirit of God dealing with you in your heart, when you know that the Spirit is moving, and you know that God is giving you a word, giving you a direction, giving you a purpose and a plan, and He's laying something out there before you, that is a vitally important time for you. And you know, I got to thinking about these two blind beggars. What an important time for them when Jesus took time out of His life took time out of his day just to spend a couple of moments with them because the Bible describes them as being blind. And you know, you think about it. Spiritual blindness is an epidemic all around us. Spiritual blindness in the world that we're living in now is something that is causing all of the troubles in Syria. It's causing all of the troubles in Iraq. It's causing all of the troubles in America. It's causing all of the troubles in Israel, in Somalia. The list could go on and on and on. But it's all because of the manipulation and the movement of the prince and the power of the air and those that don't know Christ. But it's also the simple fact 
where Satan wants to keep us blind and he wants to keep us bound. So if you found your place, Matthew chapter number 20 and verse number 29. And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou Son of David. And the multitude rebuked them, because they should hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou Son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will ye that I shall do unto you? And they said unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, as we bow before you this morning, Lord, we just rejoice in the joy and the fellowship that you've given us as we've come together just to be in your presence. We've come together to lift our voices in song. We've come together to hear what you have to share with us. And Lord, I pray that you just might make me your mouthpiece this morning. Lord, help me to share those things that, that would be pleasing in your sight. And Lord, help us that we might receive your word into our hearts, into our lives, and that, Lord, we would let it lodge there. That we would not just be hearers of the word, but that we would be doers also. And Lord, I pray now that you might just be with each one that's here. Lord, whatever the hindrance is, I pray that it might be removed so that we could be in tune to what you would have us to hear, what you would have us to understand, what you would have us to do. And Lord, we pray especially if there's anyone that, Lord, they're not in a right relationship with you. They may be lost and never have accepted you as their Lord and Savior. They may be living in sin, not doing those things that are pleasing in your sight. Lord, I pray that today would be the day that they make things right with you. And this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now when you think about the way that society goes, you think about the scope of everything that's going on around us, and you notice we can see that very similar thing right here when we look at these two blind men. You don't notice, or you don't record, the Bible doesn't record where the religious crowd stopped to take care of them. The Bible doesn't record where the worldly crowd stopped to take care of them. But yet we find Jesus Christ stopping to deal with the issue that they have. And you realize that in today's society that they will give us worldly advice. They will try to give us worldly direction. They will try to point us in the same direction that all of the rest of the world is going in. But yet the, the devil wants to get us looking around instead of looking up. The devil doesn't want us to understand what it tells us in Philippians that I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Or what it tells us over there in Acts where it says, and you shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. The devil doesn't want us to know that we have the power of Jesus Christ working in us if we've been made alive if we've been quickened from the dead, if we have Christ as our Lord and Savior, the world, the devil, the flesh, it doesn't want us to know any of that. It wants to keep us down, and it wants to keep us blinded. It wants to keep us off on the roadside somewhere. It doesn't want us to come into contact with the power and the presence of Jesus Christ. But I'm here to tell you right now that when the Spirit of God is moving, when the Spirit of God is in a place, the Word of Jesus that comes, comes upon us, that is what we have to respond to. And I want you to think about this. You imagine these two blind beggars. You imagine the shape that they're in. You imagine the way that they look. Uh, you know, you think about the place where they were living, a dry and an arid place. You think about how dirty they must have been. The beggars of that day, those that were blind, they didn't have the wealth in the society. So you imagine just how ragged their clothes must have been. You think about these beggars while they're there on the roadside, and you think about no deodorant. You think about how smelly they must have been. You think about the odor and all of the things. They were the, they were the outcast of society, but yet Jesus Christ took enough time out of his day at the height of his popularity at the height of his worldly fame, he took time out of his day to spend a little time with them. 
And Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the Lord God which changes not. He'll do the same thing for you and I. When we know, when we feel, when we recognize that His Spirit is bearing witness with our spirit and He is speaking to us, that is the time that you and I need to respond. You think about all of the things that's going on around us now. Those people that are, that are climbing the steps of fame, that are climbing the steps of popularity, they might associate, they might fraternize with you and I while they're down among us. But once they get to be famous, once they get to be popular, they may not ever turn another eye toward us. But not the Son of God. Not the Lord Jesus Christ. Even when he was at the height of his popularity, he would still look on those that were outcast to others. And folks, what is he the example of? He is the example that has been set before us in the way that you and I are supposed to live our life. We should never turn a nose down at anyone. We should never prejudge someone based upon the way that they look, based upon the way that they smell, based upon the clothes that they wear, based upon the position that they have in society. We're to take time out of our day if they're in need. Time out of our day if they have a question, if they have a burden, if they have a problem. Because that's what we see, the example that has been set before us by our Lord and Savior. And then you also think about it. He was doing that without expecting anything in return. Because they had nothing to give. What do we look for? We in the society that we live in, we've got certain standards that we have to maintain. You know, there was a guy I was thinking about, I was thinking about this uh, guy that I work with. I will go and, and I'll get him a biscuit on Friday and I'll hand it to him and he just takes it. I will, uh, I'll get the papers out of the copier. I'll carry them over there and I'll hand them to him and he just takes it. It just aggravates me that he doesn't say thank you. Just burns me up. You know, we expect things back for what we do. But yet Jesus, knowing that he won't get anything in return, Knowing that there is nothing that mankind can do for him, he does for us anyway. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends. And that's what Jesus has done for us. I want you to think about these two blind sinners here, these two blind beggars for a moment, and just picture them as yourself. Just think about them. What alerted them, what alerted them to the coming of Jesus? Now, they were blind. They didn't know. They couldn't see. They didn't recognize who it was that was coming because they couldn't see who was coming. But they heard something. They heard that Jesus was passing by. And you know something? The Bible tells us, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The devil wants to keep us to a point where we don't hear the word of God as it's being shared to us. The devil wants to keep us blinded and spiritually bound so that we don't receive the word of God when it's presented to us. The devil wants to keep us blinded and blocked out by the worldly influences so that we don't recognize the spirit of God as it moves within us. He's going to try his best to keep your eyes covered over. What we have to recognize with the ears that we have, with the Spirit as it moves around us, when the Word of God begins to be presented to us, we need to try to put aside the distractions and focus on Jesus. The Bible tells us that we are in Christ. The Bible tells us that it's through Christ that the blessings of God come. The Bible tells us that when we are with Christ, then we have a home prepared for us. We have a hope of life everlasting. My friend, the devil's going to try to keep that blinded to you. The devil's going to try to keep that blocked away from you. 
You see, Satan doesn't want his God's workers on fire. Satan doesn't want God's workers being blessed. He wants us to just go through the motions. He wants us to just try to keep on doing what we're doing. Not wanting us to see the light. Not wanting us to see the truth. Not wanting us to recognize that God has a path and a plan. You realize laid out for every one of us. When God saved you, He saved you with a specific plan in mind. He saved you with a specific purpose, a specific job that was laid out there before you. Satan doesn't want you to recognize that. My friend, who are you going to follow? Bible talked about to us as we read about it in Sunday school this morning in Ephesians that before we were saved, we were under the influence of the prince and the power of the air. But once we were saved, we were quickened, we were made alive, and we're no longer under that direction. So why is it that we're not more in tune? Why is it that we're not closer to the Lord? Why is it that when the Lord begins to speak to us, that we say, I'll just do it later. I'll just put it off a little while. It's because of the manipulation. It's because of the moving. It's because of the working of the prince of the power of the air in our life. In the life of a child of God. In the life of one who has been empowered. In the life of one who has been indwelt. In the life of one who has been uh, filled with the Spirit of God. And yet we are still allow that influence to come in. Because many times we allow our eyes to be covered. By the influence of the prince and the power of the air. I want you to notice as we look at this again. Verse number 30. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside when they heard that Jesus passed by. When they heard that Jesus passed by. You know, spiritually, we must hear before we can see. You think about that for a minute. It's not a profound thought. Spiritually, we must hear before we can see. The Bible says the natural man, a lost person, a natural man receiveth not the things of God, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. God hides his things from the lost. They're spiritually discerned. Spiritually, they're unable to receive them. You have to be spiritually able to see. You have to be able to hear before you're spiritually able to see. Shared with you a verse a while ago. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When they heard that Jesus passed by, there was just like a, I just imagine in my mind like a bell going off inside of their head. A light bulb lighting up. They heard about one that could make a difference for them. They heard about one who could change their situation. They heard about one who the work that he had done in the past, they believed he could do that right now. Have we recognized that yet? Have we figured that out yet? That when Jesus passes by, that he is able to do something. That when Jesus passes by, he passes by for a reason and with a purpose. You realize that where two or three are gathered together, he's in our midst. That the presence of God is here with us right now. The presence of God is here. The Spirit of God is around us. And it's here for a purpose. There is a laid out plan set out before us when we meet together to hear from God. He's got a plan and a word for you. He's got a word for me. And he wants us to respond to that. He wants us to recognize that. And I want you to notice what these two blind men did when they heard that Jesus passed by. What did they do? What did they do? They cried out to him. 
when they cried out to Jesus, I want you to notice, look at chapter number 21. This is where Jesus was going. This is what was fixing to happen in the life of Jesus. And yet when these two blind beggars cried out, Jesus stood still. But notice what was fixing to happen. And Jesus no doubt knew this. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied and a coat with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a coat the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the coat, and put them and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strode them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. You imagine, that's what's fixing to happen in the life of Jesus. Jesus is fixing to have his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. But then, there's a dirty, there's a cast aside, there's a filthy, there's a smelly, there's a poor beggar that hears Jesus headed for his triumphal entry at the height of his earthly ministry. And they cry out. Notice what they cry out. O Lord, thou son of David, have mercy on us. And what? does Jesus do very next verse and Jesus verse 32 and Jesus stood still and once he stood still he called them and said what will ye that I should do unto you what is it that's the burden upon your heart what is it that you're having to deal with that you can't work out on your own what is it that you're struggling with? What is it that gives you those, those feelings of anxiety, those feelings of fear, those feelings of longing, those feelings of, of loss of, of fellowship? What is it? You know what Jesus says? Jesus says, What will ye that I shall do unto you? That's the same thing that he's speaking to us about. What is it that you need from Jesus? Is it help? Is it hope? Is it love? Is it salvation? What is it that you need from Jesus? You see, I believe in my mind that regardless of what is going on in his day, Jesus will stand still for you. Regardless of what is going on around, Jesus will stand still for you. It's not like Walmart where there's long lines where you have to wait. It's open to everybody. You can come. You can get in touch with him. You can pour your heart out to him. You can receive a blessing from him. But you have to cry out to him. You see the world. Notice what it says in verse number 31. The multitude rebuked them because they should hold their peace. That's some of the blindness that the devil's trying to throw out. That's, you, know who the, you know who the multitude represents in this? Anybody got any idea who the multitude is a picture of? Remember now, they're following Jesus. The multitude is the church crowd. It's a picture of the congregation. 
that build, makes up the churches across our land. The multitude is telling that one, that's dirty. Telling that one, that's the outcast. Telling that one, that's not socially acceptable. They don't back there in the back. We may not tell them so much in words. It may only be with looks. It may only be with lack of greeting. It may be with lack of, lack of reception. But we can tell them that nonetheless. But what does Jesus say? Jesus says, what will ye that I shall do unto you? They made their request in verse number 33. They say unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be open. Verse number 34, so Jesus had compassion on them, touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight. I want you to notice two words in verse number 34. Had compassion. That's the nature of Jesus. That's what he has for us. Those two words show action. They show what our Savior is all about. I shared with you this morning. But for the grace, the mercy, and the compassion of God, we're still where we are right now. Jesus didn't have to save us, but he did. He didn't have to give us his loving kindness, but he did. He didn't have to be long-suffering to usward, but he was. Because he had compassion on those that cried out to him as he was passing by. Don't let him pass by without calling out to him if you have a need. Don't let him pass by without calling out to him if you have a burden. Jesus is here for a reason, and so are you. As Brother Phil and Miss Londy come prepare us a song of invitation, you see Jesus here as he stopped and he stood still because there was someone in that crowd that had a need. Someone in that crowd that had a burden. Someone in that crowd that had something going on in their life that they couldn't fix. Jesus stopped and stood still the moment that that person cried out to him. Regardless of what anybody else was saying, thinking or doing, Jesus stopped and stood still because he had compassion for the need that they had. Would you stand? What number, Brother Phil? If there's a need, if there's a burden, if there's something going on in your life, and you know that Jesus is passing by, do come. He's here and He's waiting, but He's not going to wait long. He may not wait forever. It's vitally important that when He is passing by, that you call out to Him. That when he is passing by, that you let him know what it is that you need. Do you need to come? Do you need to come? He can help you right now. Do you need to speak with the Lord this morning? Would you bow your head with me just a moment? Times like these, they pass pretty quickly. You can sit and you can endure the sermon. You can come because you're obligated. You can come because you feel like you're supposed to. You think about the multitude that was following Jesus. Many of them, the same situations that we're in. But yet there were two that cried out. Two that had their lives changed forever. Because regardless of what anybody else was doing, 
They knew they had a need. And they cried out to the one. And they said, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou Son of David. You've got to come to Jesus His way. Work the same way then as it does now. You have to come His way. As we sing one other verse, do you need to come? need to come this morning the moving of the Holy Spirit don't let it just pass by see have a word for you been good being in the house of the Lord with you this morning. We thank you so much for coming out and being with us. Hope and pray that if you get an opportunity that you'll be able to come back and be with us tonight at 6 o'clock. And uh, remember our Wednesday night services start at 7. And uh, don't uh, anybody that thinks they might be able to come for the work day on the 13th, uh, stay just a few minutes after services and it won't take but a second. But uh, any other word from anyone? Free tomatoes in the foyer. Free tomatoes in the foyer. All right, anybody else? Free money in... That's from me. Okay, all right. Anybody? If not, Brother Lawrence, would you dismiss us, please, sir?